Hey, what's up everybody? It's Pastor Aaron here and pretty excited because we're starting a brand new conversation on being reckless. Now, I know what you're thinking. When you hear that word, it probably has a lot of negative connotation, uh, but here's what it means. To be reckless describes a person or an action that takes a risk without the regard for other people. In other words, it's a person who takes a risk or makes a decision or a person that doesn't really think about the consequences. Now, now when you hear the word reckless, you can probably think of a person right now that comes to the top of your mind like, yep, I know who exactly who you're talking about, and that person fits in the category of reckless. Maybe it's a person at your school. Maybe it's a person on your team. Uh, maybe it's somebody in your life, and you're just like, yep, that, that's them. That's them. Or maybe when you hear the word reckless, maybe you think about a decision that you've made. Maybe you think about something that you did that fits in the category of reckless. Maybe you think about something that you're looking back and it's like, ah, I'm a little embarrassed about that. And it fits in the category of reckless or maybe something that you're really not proud of and it, because it fits in the category of something that is reckless. Now, here's the problem when it comes to reckless behavior reckless actions and when it comes to maybe days and times where we are reckless the problem is that every decision that we make in life everything that happens in life starts with a thought i mean right now the decision that you're making and getting ready to make starts with a thought but your it doesn't stay a thought the truth of the matter is that your thoughts become your words and your words ultimately become your actions and your actions ultimately become your habits and your habits determine your character and your character points to your future, your destiny. And, and the problem with maybe our reckless behavior and some of the people that we know that might be reckless or even the idea of being reckless is that when we start with a reckless thought, it can lead to a reckless future. And I know that that's not what God wants for you. And I know that's not what I want for you. So, so, so how can we think differently about this? Now, I, I wonder what it would look like if maybe we took risks without the regard of others and actually took risks with the regard of others. Right. To be reckless is to to make a decision or to take a risk without the regard of anybody in mind. But what if we actually made decisions and took risks with people in mind? What if we were actually reckless for Christ? What, what if we were reckless for our relationship with God? What difference would that make? And even deeper, what does that even look like? Now, the beautiful thing is, is that there's a passage in the Bible that, that kind of helps us piece all of this together and have a proper perspective about how all of us and especially you can live your life taking risks with the consideration of other people and being reckless for Christ. But because here's what I know, and maybe you don't know this, the years that you're living now, your middle and high school years could be the launching pad to what God wants to do in your future. There's a letter that Paul writes to his mentee named Timothy is actually the book of Timothy or the letter of Timothy. And it's in chapter four. And Paul's purpose here is to encourage his mentee to, to be a leader. In other words, Paul sees something in Timothy that maybe Timothy doesn't yet see in himself. And he's really trying to get Timothy to to, to get this, because if Timothy gets this truth, if he if he gets what Paul is trying to say to him, it can make the biggest difference, not only for Timothy's life, but it can make a, the biggest difference for every single person that's connected to Timothy. Here's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 12. He says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young, but be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Now, Paul says a lot in this short little verse. And today I just want to focus on two things that he says. He, he says, be an example to all believers in number one, what you say, and number two, the way you live. 
Now, I just want you to think about that for a moment. Uh, imagine for a moment that the, the biggest decision, the biggest effect that you'll have on other people will be based on what you say and what you live. Here's the truth of the matter. The truth is when it comes to our words, when it comes to the things that we say, everything that comes out of our mouth is directed to either giving life or adding to someone's pain. Think about that. That every word that you that that comes out of your mouth, every everything that starts with a thought that turns into a word that turns into an action, turns into a habit, turns into our character, our future. It's either directed towards giving life or is directed towards giving pain to the people that are around us. Now, there's another letter that Paul wrote um, to the Ephesian church in chapter four, and he says a lot there about the things that we say. Notice what he says, verse 29 through 31. He says, don't use foul or abusive language. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. But notice what he says next. He says, let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. Because he goes on to give a list of things that we probably shouldn't say, and he gives a list of things that we should say. In verse 31, he says we should get rid of all bitterness, and bitterness is expressed in our words. He says we should get rid of all rage, all anger, rage, anger, things that are expressed through our words. He says we should get literally get rid of harsh words, get rid of slander and all types of evil behavior. These are things that are most of the time, if we think about it, they're expressed through our words. Now, hopefully you did this this morning. Um, I was brushing my teeth. And as I was brushing my teeth, um, I was putting toothpaste on my toothbrush and I squeezed a little bit too much toothpaste out of my toothbrush. And I know you probably experienced that before. And I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm kind of a penny pincher. I like to be super resourceful. At least that's what I like to think of it. My family just says that I'm cheap and maybe that's a little bit true. But I was a little upset that too much toothpaste came out and I was literally trying to put toothpaste back into the toothpaste tube. And I realized that it wasn't going to work because once the toothpaste is out, there's no turning back. And the same is true with the words that you use every single day. When it comes to the words that you use, once they come out of your mouth, there is no way that you can put them back in. And either they're going to give life to somebody's situation or it's going to cause pain to somebody's situation. And so our words are directed to either giving life or or giving pain, and Paul makes this very clear that everything that we should say sh should be good and it should be helpful. And the reason why he's saying this is because, is because you can never take your words back. And because you can never take your words back, then it means that we should every single day use our words wisely. Now, the second thing that he says is that we should be an example in what we say, but he also says that we should be an example in how we live. Now, there's another story in the Bible. It's actually a parable that Jesus told in one of his Gospels and in and, and one of the Gospels that's written about him. And basically, it's a parable of the prodigal son. And, and the prodigal son basically takes his, his inheritance and the scriptures say he goes out to, to, to wild living. He, he takes what his daddy was going to give him later on in life, something that was meant for him to have later in life, but he took it immediately in the moment and he used it for wild living. In other words, he was living a reckless life. He, he was living a reckless life. And while he was living a reckless life, the scriptures say that he came to his senses he said, you know what, this isn't working for me. And there are times when you've made a bad decision and you realize it's a bad decision. You're like, you know what, this isn't working for me. Let, let me go back to 
what was actually working for me. And that's what this prodigal son did. He actually went back to his father and he asked for forgiveness and, and, and his father received him back, which is the best part of the story, which lets us know that even when we get caught in reckless living and and making decisions and taking risks that affect other people or without other people in mind, God has enough grace for you. God has enough grace for me to welcome us back home so that we can make decisions with people in mind. And, and, and that's the goal of this story. It, it is to show us that God is gracious, that when we have made a mistake, when we've said things, when we can't get the words back, God can still accept us and bring us back home and allow us to live our lives in a way that reflects him. In other words, he gives us another chance and only through God are we able to make much of our second chance, which is why when everything that we say, we should think about what we say because we can't get those words back. So we have to choose. We have to choose wisely. So how do we do that? How, how, do, we, how do we make the most of, of everything that we say? How do we make sure that the life that we live and the things that we say is a life that is lived that considers other people? Here's the, the, the one action item that all of us can do. Number one, um, we can stop and think before we speak. It, it is just stopping and thinking before we speak. And when you stop and think, what you're considering is other people. You're considering how this might affect other people. You're considering, is this helpful? Is this loving? Is this, um, um, is this something that's going to add value? And when we stop and think before we speak, it could be the difference from us experiencing a consequence or experiencing an opportunity from God that we've never thought that we would have. When we stop and think before we speak, it could be the difference of causing pain or causing life or giving life. So, so here's what I want you to think about. As you have these discussions, as you continue the conversation of what it looks like to, to live reckless for God, reckless for Christ, to take risk with your life, with other people in mind, I want you to know that our words initiates how we live. The, the words that we say initiates our lifestyle. So when we look at our lifestyle, it is a reflection of things that we've said. It is a reflection of things that we say. And so we have to get accustomed of positive words. We have to get accustomed of saying things that God would say so that we can experience the best life that God has ever planned for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the reminder that we can live reckless for you, that we can live our lives in a way that considers other people, that makes an incredible difference and an everlasting difference that sometimes we would never know until years and time down pass. So God, would you help us today to stop and think before we speak? Would you help us today to remember that our words is the precursor to our lifestyle? And I just pray that we would have the best lifestyle that honors you. In Jesus' name, amen.